But that's not all, brothers and sisters. In verse 2 of Daniel chapter 1, Daniel chapter 1 and verse 2, it says, And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. End of quote. Now, what does this all mean in light of what we have just learned? Well, the key land, the key is behind understanding what vessel's spiritual meaning is and what Shinar's spiritual meaning is. Let me explain to you. We know that the vessels of the house of God were the various instruments that were used in the service of the worship of the true and living God. But in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 20, 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 20, we are also told, in a, and in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some unto honor, and some unto dishonor. Verse 21 goes on to say, And if a man purge himself of these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's, master's use, prepared unto every good work. End of quote. Therefore, we see in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 that vessels can also represent men. Men that are enlisted in the worship of God. Keep that in mind. What does it mean to be taken into the land of Shinar now? Well, when we take a look at the book of Genesis, Genesis the 11th chapter, Genesis the 11th chapter, starting at verse 1, we see clearly what it means to be taken into the land of Shinar. And it's, let's start at verse 1, Genesis 11, and it says, And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, and they found, and that they found rather a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of, of the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to the city and the tower, which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to. Let us go down, and therefore confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the whole earth. We see here that in the land of Shinar, Shinar was the original building place for the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, we know for a fact, was built for the purpose of rebelling against the true and living God of heaven. Babel is also the original building site of Babylon. What does this mean in light of everything that we just read? Well, the Bible tells us, once again, in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 2, that God allowed part of the vessels of the house of God to be taken into the land of Shinar during the siege. Therefore, in its spiritual context, because of the apostasy that has been taking place in Christianity, because of the apostasy that we have allowed to come into our homes, the compromises that we have been made, making with paganism, many will leave the ranks of being faithful to God and enter into the service of the devil, for they will leave Jerusalem and be taken captive, take, taken captive rather, into Babylon. Once again, this is the same thing that the Bible was talking about in Revelations chapter 18 and verse 5. That's why God said, come out of her, my people, Jerusalem, Christianity. Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not her plagues. The reason why people are going and falling captive, 
excuse me, unfortunately, some people are willingly going and others are being taken captive because they are being deceived. But the reason why this is taking place is because they are breaking the wall, the hedge of protection that God has set about us. And we are told in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 8, He that diggeth a pit shall fall, unto, fall into it, and whoso, and whoso breaketh a hedge, a serpent shall bite him. All those that break the hedge of protection, which is obedience to God's commandments, all those that break that hedge of protection, they will be bit by the venomous serpent Satan. For we are told in the book of Revelations chapter 12 and verse 9 that, that Satan is that old serpent. And to, be bit by Satan, and to be bit by Satan, that old serpent, means to have his venomous principles of sin infused into your life so that you become a rebel against the kingdom of God. This is what's taking place. Many are leaving the ranks of Christendom and going into Babylon. And we were warned that this would happen. For we are told in the Bible that a time would come that some would depart from the faith and would begin to give heed to seducing doctrines, seducing spirits rather, and the doctrines of devils. But praise God, brothers and sisters, as we see in the book of Daniel chapter 1 and verse 2, that only part of the vessels of the house of God were taken into the land of Shinar. That means even though many... Even though many will be disobedient, even though many will give up their faith and leave the Christian ranks, excuse me, although many will be disobedient and leave the ranks of Christianity, God will still retain a remnant who will be faithful to his commandments, who will keep the commandments of God and retain the testimony of Jesus Christ as their rule of life. But unfortunately, Many, like I said, are defecting from the truth and entering into the ranks of Babylon. Let us move forward. In the book of Daniel, chapter 1, once again, starting at verse 3, we go on to see something else that's very interesting. And it says there, And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the, the master of his eunuchs, and the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, and the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seed and of the princes. End of quote. Now remember we said earlier that we're going to look at this from a spiritual context. And we learn from the book of Isaiah that Satan is the spiritual king of Babylon. So what does this mean then that Satan spoke unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs? Does Satan have some type of agency or some type of gigantic system of ideologies that he uses to be a master of his eunuchs? Yes, he does. The key to understanding this, understanding this is behind the name Ashpenaz. Remember I told you names have great meaning. The name Ashpenaz means to make prominent the sprinkled. The name Ashpenaz means to make prominent the sprinkled. Well, what does this mean, to make prominent the sprinkled? Well, we simply know that the word prominent means to make well known, to make important, to make renowned, to make famous, to make well respected. That's what the word prominent means. And Satan says, speaks to his system and he says to make, he wants them to make prominent the sprinkled. I hope I know this might not make a lot of sense as of yet, but as we go forward, it sure will. Who is this one that is supposed to make prominent the sprinkled? To make well-known, to make famous the sprinkled? Who in the world are the sprinkled? 